on this planet to translate his amazement at the wonder of life into a way to explain it was Charles Darwin. So what this is, is a celebration of Darwin's greatness in the form of a rap. Now some would say a debasement, but I would say please be patient. Okay, so how do you go from amoebas to rappers? You open the origin of species and you read his chapters. You're gonna learn about the impact of people's actions on farm animals. Ducks, cows, dogs, domestic crops. They had wild ancestors, but somehow they went soft. Kind of like underground rappers going pop. Like for instance, in West Africa around 7000 BC, humans domesticated black-eyed peas. But don't call it a sellout, please. Those black-eyed peas have mouths to feed. Their wild cousins, well they just watch from the weed. See, there is nothing artificial about domestication. Ant colonies keep domestic aphids. It's an arrangement where one hand washes the other. We protect the cow, and the cow offers the other. And that's how we get a mouthful of butter. But in the wild, that cow is simply not going to cut it. But think about it. If our little selections and little preferences can change and enhance all the critical differences between wild and domestic breeds over the centuries, well, maybe that can explain everything. I mean, in nature, instead of us making selections, it's just survival and reproduction in the midst of competition, where slight differences that arise randomly get selected by the pressures applied environmentally, and eventually species divide like a family tree into everything alive, from a tiny fly to a huge manatee to all of us. Humanity. So, how does this apply to the craft of the MC? Rappers. Well, they say evolution is an algorithm. It's like an equation. It only has three parts. Variation, selection, and heritability. So let's see if we can find all three in that ecosystem known as rap music. All right, so variation can be found in the styles on display. I mean, rappers all have different techniques when they're on stage, and the results can be seen in the audience's face. Like, for instance, at this moment, y'all look amazed. Like guppy removed abruptly from your aquatic space. Your minds are probably racing over questions of style and race and genre and time and place and some of your eyes are glazed like, for God's sake, how long will this take? But if you all feel that way, then soon I'll be replaced by someone more entertaining, like maybe Lil Wayne. Then again, if enough people like you choose to plant my seed, eventually you might turn me into a bona fide black eyed pea. See? You're like ancient breeders. You're rearranging the features of a species of sheep or increasing the sweetness of your peaches every season whenever you choose to seed it or to feed it or to breed it or to weed it out and delete it because you just don't see it as needed. I mean, the preferences in question could be for bigger chicken breasts or rip it through the thinner midsection or it could just be an inner predilection to pick the best in any mixed collection. They call that artificial selection. See, you're a farmer. That's how it is. You can't opt out of it. You have no choice but to make choices. You're helpless. It's because your time itself is limited. You're not selfish. It's just the rap version of the doctrine of Malthus. It goes like this. Too many MCs, not enough mics. See? That's the proportion of hungry mouths, which is the too many MCs, compared to food resources in the form of captive audiences. Crowds, that's the not enough mic, because crowds of two or more will always be at least half as common as performers, right? I mean, there's too many MCs. Can you see the mathematical problem? It creates a bit of a shortage because there's not enough mics. But survival on stage, well, that's a non-random process. Because those who get massive responses, they tend to influence those who aspire to get massive responses. So if you say I sound like an Eminem ripoff, then I'll probably get pissed off and start flipping you off and grabbing my crotch and acting obnoxious and screaming, nah, fuck that, dog, nah, that's preposterous. So maybe what you're watching is actually a form of imitation modified by experience, which is pretty similar to the genetic basis of inheritance, heritability, except it's part Darwinism and part Lamarckism with genes and culture co-evolving as we rock to the rhythm. But whether you think culture is really evolved, or if it's just a silly metaphor that's pretty but false, or 
Whether you've never even thought about that, I still think Darwin can teach us all about rap. Because it's all about that competition for status with intricate language delivered in battles, and it's all about getting that fitness advantage and the different adaptive behavior patterns that have us acting crazier than capricating mating dances. But hey, that's natural selection. So just sit back and listen and you'll witness the evolution of the rap profession. Brr.